हॅलो एव्हरी वन कस काय मुंबई गुड हॅलो एव्हरी वन मायनेम इज इम्रान आय वर्क फॉर आर टी कॅम्प आर टी कॅम्प प्रोवाइड्स वर्ड प्रेस सोल्युशन्स टू एंटरप्राइजेस अँड टुडे वी आर हिअर टू टॉक अबाउट वाय वर्ड वाय प्रोग्रेसिव्ह ॲप्स फॉर वर्ड प्रेस सो लेट मी चेक विथ यू हाव मनी फ्यू गायज आर डेव्हलपर्स awesome big crowd for developers going to make my job a lot easier because i know i'm not speaking to people who probably don't know about this so that's that's really nice thank you okay what do you think of this what is this net connection nahi hai but ye is is that some kind of a game i believe yes. what is that game called dinosaur game what happens in the end no one knows right you never play till the end we are just waiting for the internet to come back how is the feeling when you get this pathetic pathetic right you don't feel good the internet is gone you are doing something you are probably chatting with someone or using facebook and just goes off so hold on to that feeling we are going to come back to that very soon okay so let's talk about softwares now the hardest problem with the software is actually the distribution So let's figure out about the history of the software distribution. Who knows what this is? Who said analytical engines? Can you raise your hand? Is likha hua yahan pe correct? Okay, theek hai good. <laughs> so it's a difference engine basically. uh it's the first known computer algorithm which was written by charles babbage so the uh, you must be wondering why are we talking about this this is about progressive web app so the idea is that this is how the computers were earlier and then later on you have the spread of cartridges and cassette tapes for distribution of commercial software so these came in right you remember the old days when you used to use these cassettes and then came the cd uh dvds floppies you remember old days when we had to uh, in order for us to boot the software we had to put the put the floppy floppy so we had to actually purchase all of this so when the program started to become large we started using floppy disk cds and dvds were used so with that some for some of you you might have this kind of a trouble with cvds sometimes our system won't work you click on it and it goes out in and things like that yeah Okay but today we have web application and software distribution has become so simple and so easy that we don't have to be dependent on floppies and dvds etc so now in today's world when we have all the modern technologies what do you think you will do when you get the dvd so some of the guys who have mustache would probably do something like this you just take the cd and just Okay so let's uh, talk about the trends of the mobile web versus mobile app so when i talk about mobile web which means opening your links on the mobile browser and mobile apps are just like your facebook twitter and all other apps like so how many what are the favorite apps you guys use maybe flipkart or amazon for shopping which one sorry i didn't get that pubg <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> all right okay so according to com score only 13% of the users use mobile web and 87% of the mobile uh, 87% of the users use mobile apps so why do you think there's a difference why more people are using the mobile apps and not the web can anyone tell me easy to access, easy to access? absolutely you just go on to your home screen and you have the app you also have shortcut just click on to it straight into the app so first like you said easy to access on home screen they work offline yes at least uh, many of the features do you have push notifications which bring the user back in even if your application is closed and you get a notification you get that back right so uh, for example when i order food on swiggy and even if i have closed the application i get a notification okay the driver is on the way or the food is being prepared you click on the notification you can track as to how it's going to be access to mobile features and sensors like camera etc now you must be wondering 80% of the time is spent on users top 3 apps which means that we don't really use many apps 
Now, I'm going to ask you a question that how many apps do you think on, on an average user downloads on their mobile? So I'm going to give you some options. So let's say an average user downloads around three apps in a month. And then I'll give second option as five apps and the third one is 10 apps. So how many say user downloads three apps? Just a wild guess. Raise your hand. OK. Five apps? Wow, we have five apps for more people. OK. Ten apps? OK. OK, so we have like a mixed ground. OK, let me tell you, all of the answers are incorrect because I gave you the wrong options. The answer is zero apps. So the average user downloads zero apps on their mobile. Now the reason for this is because generally, when, we, when do we download apps? When probably we'll get a new phone, and we want to download all our, our previous apps, or probably some of your friends share those apps with you, saying that, OK, this app is brilliant. So uh, like a camera app. Who all li like taking selfies? Come on, guys. I'm expecting more hands for selfies. You don't want to tell everyone? We all like taking selfies, right? So your friend tells you, OK, this is a cool app for taking selfies. Let's go ahead and do that. It will beautify you. Sometimes it makes our faces so wide that we can't even recognize who that person is. <laughs> OK. So mobile apps, so we are referring to mobile apps, basically, uh, has more capability. Because they work offline, they have access to your sensors, mobile sensors, etc. However, the web app have got better reach. So if I had to give you some figures, you'll be amazed to know that approximately 100 visits per month for an average user. And that's according to Comscore. So mobile apps have better capability, while mobile web has better reach. So now they're, they're going in different tangents, if you see. right? So I have better capability for mobile apps, and I have better reach for the mobile web. If we can combine both of those, then probably we can come up with some better solutions. So let's say I combine both of these. So what do we get? We get PWA. OK, so we get the best of both of the world by combining mobile app as well as mobile web. So what is the full form of PWA? Progressive web apps. I know some people call it. Uh, I'm going to be building PWA apps. Well, it's already a progressive web app. OK, so what are they? Can someone tell me? OK, so you must have read that. So who can tell me what is progressive web app? Come on, anyone can try. It's OK if you're wrong. OK, can someone give him a mic? Do we have another mic? Yes. OK. So you can say your name. And then you can tell me about it. Let's go ahead. Surendra here. Hi, Surendra. Uh, uh, for progressive web app, you don't have to install it. Okay. You can, just like a uh, web page, you can uh, go and access it, huh? mm -hmm. having the feature of the uh, app. So you mean to say you don't have to install it from the App Store? App Store. OK, awesome. Can we clap for Surendra? Awesome. Great. So yes, you're very close. Progressive web, uh, web app are basically nothing but just web applications that have like native app features. OK, and you progressively enhance your web applications with those features. So who knows about Flipkart Lite? You do? OK, awesome. One, two, three, four. I'll, I'll stop counting because I can see there are many people who know about it. Awesome. So what does it do? What is Flipkart Lite? It works offline, right? You can browse through different products. So in 2015, they come up with this uh, PWA implementation. They are one of the early adopters of PWA. And it definitely revolutionized things because they work offline. Even if you are at the airport, or if you are inside of an airplane, and if you want to browse through products, you can do that. So this is one of the examples for PWA. You can add to the home screen. You can install it just like every other app. So the first requirement of PWA is it needs to be reliable, which means it needs to work offline. It needs to be fast. OK, so uh, I'm sure at many places, not only just in India, we have poor network connectivity. So it should work. So probably we can have some caching strategy where we can cache the data 
and then we can show the data from the cache. And it needs to be engaging, which means that even if the user has uh, closed the applications, he should be able to uh, open the application when he gets the notification. You click on the notification, you're straight into the app. So how do you use your app? Like one of you guys said, you just have to click on that app, app icon, and then your app opens. So if we can have our PWA on the place on user's mobile home screen, I think we have done our job. So what's the need of PWA? So in order for us to understand why do we build PWA, let's understand the difference between native apps versus progressive web apps. So the first thing is that in native apps, which are your mobile apps, you need to develop and maintain three separate code bases. What are those three separate code bases will be for? Can anyone tell me? Android, yes. iOS and web app. OK, absolutely. So you have to create a web application. You have to create one for iOS. Then you have to create for Android as well. Could this also mean I may have to hire three separate developers? Correct? However, you'll be amazed to know that in PWA, it's just one code base. So one app does it for all. So probably you don't have to hire a separate developer and you know pay extortion amount of money. Because if you want to publish your app into Play Store, I'm sure many of you must have already done that. You have to pay for it. And they take certain amount uh, if you are going to go ahead and uh, make your app uh, you know, chargeable, etc. So they take some amount from that. High friction of distribution. However, in PWA, it's accessible on Android, iOS, web, wide variety of browsers. Uh, native apps are less discoverable. What does that mean? Well, it means that it won't be possible to get it indexed by Google, because they're on your Play Store. So probably you'll have to search that uh, app from the Play Store, and that's when you get it, but not on the web. However, because PWA are web apps, the content is discoverable and indexed by search engine, which is going to be good for your client, isn't it? Yes? yes. Awesome. Only the app download can link can be shared. However, in progressive web app, you have direct link of the page screen that can be shared. How many times have your friends uh, you know, send you a link for Play Store? It really happens, right? Generally, they send you a link for web applications. And you just open it, and it opens up in the web browser. Then again, uh, they are not bookmarkable. However, progressive web, web apps are. Uh, the update. Update the app through Play Store. So I'm sure think of a situation, a lot of times what happens, you get a notification saying that there are 10 apps that need to be updated. They eat up your mobile data, right? It slows things down. You can see, I mean, I don't like it personally that I see that there are 10 apps being updated. So with progressive web apps, you don't have to worry about it. They're always fresh, which means the developer who's building that, he just need to push the code on the server and automatically gets updated. Isn't that easy, guys? Yes? Awesome. Native apps, again, high data usage. And progressive web apps saves your data. Now, in native apps, many of the features require the permission from the user. I'm sure you all have experience when you try to download an A application, it asks you for different permissions. Like, do you want to give permission to make voice calls? Do you want to give permission to, make, uh, you know, to access camera? And things like that. Sometimes I feel a little you know, disturbed and annoyed that you know, what, is it, what, what this app is going to do with all of that access. Am I going to be hacked or something? So with progressive apps, you don't have to worry about that. There are only a couple of permissions you take care of that. So what are different features of progressive web apps? First of all, they need to be progressive. Progressive means that we could be uh, converting our existing uh, applications into progressive web apps also. It doesn't have to be like you have to start from scratch. So you might be thinking that I have my old project. Can I convert that into PWA? Well, yes, you can. You don't actually have to implement everything. If you want to just implement caching, you go ahead and do that. And later on, as the time proceeds, you can implement other features as well. Second one is responsive. So they should work across the uh, mobile tablet as well as web. Uh, they should work offline in poor con connectivity as well. And of course, they should work offline in mobile as well as desktop. They need to be fresh, so we discussed this. And save. So one of the key requirements of progressive web apps are that they need to be secure. 
So they would only work on HTTPS. So if your site is on HTTPS, brilliant, good job. Otherwise, it, it, many of the features won't work. They are discoverable, which means they can be easily indexed by Google. They are re-engageable, so you get notifi push notifications, you click on push notification and you're straight back into app. They are durable and they are linkable as well. So you, you can share the links and it directly takes you to that particular link. Now how do we build progressive web apps? So how many of you guys have already built progressive web apps? Okay, quite a few. Okay. So, how's your experience? Can any of, you, any of you tell me how's your experience been with building progressive web apps? Yes, anyone? Hello. Hi. Hi, my name is Ajit. Uh, so I have built a couple of uh, PWS for clients. Okay. So it has been a quite a good experience because it kind of improves the overall user experience. Because mm -hmm. these days we talk a lot about giving a user a better experience mm -hmm. in terms of if it's a website or a web app. So when you create uh, ordinary websites, they work when they are online. Mm -hmm. But you know, if internet is fluctuating or if you want to give them uh, some options where if internet is not there, entirely mm -hmm. not there. Mm -hmm. so, so going on a PWA kind of removes all those bottlenecks and give them a better experience. Awesome. Thank you. Let's clap for Ajit Bora. Great. So let's go into a little bit of technical side of it. So I know we all talked about it gives me so many features, it does this, it does that. But how do we actually build it? So the question revolves around that. I know there are so many tutorials available on, uh, on the internet that you can learn from. But if I had to just stick to basics. What are the bare minimum thing that I need to take care of in order for me to build the progressive web apps? Well, I give you that confidence that the moment you walk away from this room, you will have enough knowledge that you can go back and tell your clients, you know what, I'm going to give you a uh, feature. And they're going to be super happy. Okay, does that really work? Well, yes, it will. So let's see how we do that. Step one, create a web app manifest. Anyone knows what that is? Web app manifest? Correct? It's okay. I'm not going to ask you a question. You can raise your hand if you know about it. Okay, we have a few. Awesome. So, Web App Manifest is nothing but just a JSON file, okay, that contains some meta information about your website. So, it just tells your browser about how your web application should behave when it's installed on the user's mobile. So in order for you to have a valid manifest, there are different compatibility. So for Chrome, you need, it will be called manifest.json. For Opera, you have manifest, uh, again, same thing. For Mozilla, you have manifest.webmanifest. And this one is for Microsoft. So if I have to show you how that looks like, so it just because it's a JSON file, you just have key value, value pairs. So you have short name, uh, which could be used on the home screen and the launcher when your app gets installed. So wherever there is less space, it will be using the short, short name. And for long name, it's going to be put that under name. Uh, when you install your app, that's when that name will be used. Then there are different icons. So what icons do you want to use when the user installs your app onto the mobile? And this is used for home screen, app launcher, task switcher, splash screen, etc. I'm not going to go into detail of the code bit because that can definitely be explored later. Then you have the start URL. Well, this means that uh, when the user opens the application from the mobile, uh, what page should it land to? Theme color, what will be the theme color of your uh, app and the background color as well. And display standalone means that whether you want to show a web bar on top or not. So this would mean that it will be on a standalone mode. Okay, you have scope. You also need to tell your browser about the manifest, you just need to link it. Uh, if I have to check about the browser support for this web manifest, you can see Chrome is always on the top, because of course it's built by Google. And then you have Edge, that's supported in the latest version. Uh, iOS Safari has some support for it, not all. We'll come back to iOS, because I'm sure many of you must be wondering that, will it work for my iOS or not? So we'll come back to that. Next thing is service workers. 
तो हु नोज वॉट अ सर्विस वर्कर इज ओके मैनी ऑफ यू ओके यस यू कैन टेल मी माइक प्लीज ओके ऑसम Uh, you can say your name and then you can tell us about it i uh, i'm ashwin yes and uh, what i know about service workers are actually these are the uh, the files or code which will make your website into a pw and add its features okay so this is where our uh, coding will take place awesome awesome thank you very much let's clap for him guys awesome okay सब लोग बोलते रहे कि मैं से बहुत काम करा रहा है खा खा के आके आने के बाद मैं आई वॉट जस्ट वॉन्ट टू रिलैक्स एंड चिल आउट इन द एयर कंडीशन इज आस्क मी टू टॉक एंड क्लैप एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट सो गाइज फॉर माई टॉक्स इट्स कॉन्ट बी लाइक अ टू वे थिंग राइट बिकॉज यू स्पेंड योर टाइम कमिंग ओवर हियर लिस्निंग टू मी एंड यू नो पुटिंग ऑल ऑफ द एफर्ट सो इट्स बेटर इट नीड्स टू बी टू वे थिंग सो दैट वेन यू लीव दिस रूम यू हैव समथिंग टू टेक अवे इज दैट गुड येस ऑसम So what are service workers like he said service worker is just a script that your browser runs in the background uh, separate from your web page So let's say you have web browser okay so web browser what does it do it makes an http request to the server so what service worker will do is it will act as a middleware and it will intercept that http request wahi pe usko rok dega wo and then over there it will check if some data is there in the cache it will go ahead and uh, serve that from the cache or it will make a network request to the server we'll get into the detail of that in some time so there's a life cycle for service workers there are three different phases of serv- service worker life cycle first is register as i says the time when we register a service worker then you have the install event so there are different events that take place and we just uh you know attach our function at this point whatever we want to do so we add files to cache at the time when it's installed and then when it's activated then we delete the previous cache because there could be some data that will be stale for example if you publish a, po- a new post or update a post then i don't want my user to get the old data the stale data he needs to get the new one so that's why we need to delete the previous cache step 2 we register the service worker so there's some code uh you first check if the service worker is in navigator if it is you just register it so that's your sw.js is a service worker file url then if it is registered you get a message that yes it is registered otherwise you get an error so you just need to register it basically that's all is happening over here okay step 3 add files to cache so you create a cache version the reason why we are creating a version so that when we update something we can change the version of the cache and then it'll automatically up, uh, delete the old cache and put the new one and then we just put the urls of different cache inside of it so you have index.html that's my root one you have manifest.json and your images your css file so you will put all of that here later on we are going to loop through all of this and just put all of these in into the cache so on the install event if you remember from the previous picture uh, once the service worker is installed we go ahead and all add all of those files that we just saw into the cache step 4 we delete the previous cache like we discussed so we listen to the activate event we loop through each item in the array and we go ahead and delete the previous cache if we match uh, if we find that the cache version is changed okay so if i had to see that on the browser and if i do a console you can see that there are different events that are triggered so service worker install caching files then service worker got registered activated we are checking if there's a new cache version and in this case there was no new version were found now if we go back and check into applications tab when we do inspect element you can see this is a service worker there's a source status all of the information is available uh, for the service worker over here and if i go to manifest it tells me uh, the theme color the background all of this information that we had put into the manifest.json file and you also have the icon that is being used over here and you can see this is where the uh, data is stored as cache so once the service worker is activated it has got full control over the pages 
and it can now handle events such as fetch, push, and sync. So push is for push notifications, sync is to sync the data in the background, and fetch is to fetch the data. So let's say, uh, this is my web browser. So itna sab kuch code dikha diya, I'm sure kaafi kuch cheeze nahi samaj mea honge. It's completely fine, it's just an overview of it. But I'm sure this diagram will help you understand how things work behind the scenes. So let's say this is your web browser. It makes an HTTP request, let's say for the home page or about page, for anything for that matter. What, will, what Service Worker will do is, it will act as a middleware, and then it will intercept that HTTP request. It's going to check if the data, if the request URL is in cache. If it is, it's going to serve the data from the cache itself. If it isn't, then it's going to get the data from the server, and it's going to feed the data back to the web browser with the data from the server. Is that clear enough? Yes? Awesome. Fetch data from the cache. This is how we do it if programmatically with the code. So we listen to the fetch event. Then we go ahead and send the response from the cache if it is available in the cache. Otherwise, we make a network request using the JavaScript fetch function. OK, if I had to check that over here, you can see all of the fetch event occurred to our main.css, main.js, your images, all of that. So all of the fetch event is occurring over here when we load that in the browser. And now you can see over here, so at this point, all of these data is coming from the service worker. So the service worker is fetching all of that information from the cache when we go offline. OK, now adding a custom add to home screen. So once you've done all of this step, of course, you've got all of the uh, PWA done, but if you want to add a custom Add to Home Screen button, you can do that by this. So this is basically a code for that. I'm not going to go into the detail of it, but you just listen to Before Install Prompt, and you go ahead and uh, grab hold of the custom element that you have created, and you just go ahead and uh, create this event. So this is the app that we have created. You can see there's an Install app. Uh, you click on that, it is being added to the home screen. It's added to the home screen now. If we go back to a home screen, you can see there's an app, Coritech. You click on that, you're straight into it. And once we go offline, so now we are offline in the flight mode, you can see the step app still works. So we have built our first progressive web apps. Isn't that wonderful? Can we clap for us? Awesome. Was that simple, guys? No rocket science, right? Great. Lighthouse performance. If we do a lighthouse performance for the app we just built together, this is how it looks like. Yeah? Yay! We did it. Awesome. So different plugins available for WordPress. There's Super PWA, there's WordPress Mobile Pack, PWA. All of these plugins are there. Uh, you can use Super PWA plugin if you want to convert your WordPress website into a PWA. So just basic settings that you need to put in. Uh, browser compatibility. So Google, Mozilla, Edge, Brave, Samsung Internet, these are compatible. For iOS, they just started supporting the PWA from version 11.3. Only some features are supported, like background sync, web push notifications are currently not supported. And manual press, share icon, and then add to home screen is uh, currently, uh, you have to do that manually, basically. Popular PWAs, you have Flipkart Lite, Twitter Lite, Pin Interest, Tinder, OLX, Trivago. And at RTCAM, we are also building a progressive web app, which is, which is actually a WooCommerce store in React. So we have built a WooCommerce store in React, which works offline. As you can see, you can add uh, data, add the, the products to the cart. You can increase, decrease. You don't have to actually update it manually. It's all happening in React. And you can also go offline, and this app works there as well. So we're building that at RTCAM. You can always check that. There's a Git repository over there. You can see it's offline, and it's being stored in the cache API. So references, uh, you can go to developers.google.com, web uh, fundamentals, if you want to learn more about PWA. Uh, the code that I've just shown you, this is available on this uh, particular URL. And the WP decoupled that I showed you is actually available on this uh, GitHub URL. Uh, I want to thank WordCamp Mumbai as organizers and volunteers for this WordCamp. 
I want to thank my sister, Mavash Fatma, because who presented this beautiful design of presentation. How many of you guys like this presentation design? All of you. I, I'm sure we can clap for them. Thank you. Okay, we also have learn.articam.com, which is uh, if you basically, uh, if you want to learn WordPress, you can go onto that. And of course, we are hiring at uh, Articam. And thank you very much, guys.